All right, this is uh, Math 2, Unit 10, uh, sorry, Unit 12, Lesson 10, or 12B6, depending on how your teacher calls this. A little homework help for some of these solutions for Form K uh, that goes with this unit. Okay, uh, we have solving uh, systems, of linear, systems of linear and quadratic equations, looking for solutions of these. Essentially, what you're looking for are places where um, if you had a graph of some sort, and you had a linear graph that went like that, and a quadratic graph that went like this, a solution means where do those two graphs intersect. And that's the idea behind this lesson today, is that there are different ways of finding out where those points are going to be. Sometimes you can do it with graphing. Sometimes you can do it by using some more algebra methods. We're using elimination in numbers 5 through 8. And then we're also really using substitution on the back side and then a graphing calculator. Um, I do not own a graphing calculator, so I will not be doing that part there. But a graphing calculator makes it a whole lot easier. If you just plug the numbers in, it does the work for you. So back to the beginning here, looking at the graphing part. All right, so a couple ways to go about this graphing part. I can go ahead and just, first of all, draw my little graph, which is not a problem here. If you wanted to and you weren't sure what, where to begin, you could just make a simple um, you know, a t-chart with x and y for each, each one of the equations. Right? So I could have my y equals x squared minus 3x, and I can make an x and y t-chart like you did back in kind of early math world and plug in numbers until I figured out something that would work uh, to make a graph. Now, the first thing I would actually recommend you do is, though, take a look at the linear one, because that's going to be the easiest one to graph. On the linear one, because we know this is going to be my slope is in front here, which is 1, and I have a y-intercept of 5, I know that for the linear one, I can go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I can make my first point right there. And because it's linear, um, I know my slope is 1 over 1 for this one here. So at 1, I'm going to go up 1 to 6. And if I went back the other way, at negative 1, I would be at 4. And then at negative 2, I would be at 3, and so on. So I'm going to have a linear graph, a linear line, sorry, with this one here. So on this one, if I was to say, for example, let's put 0, if x is 0, y is going to be 5. x is 1, it's 6, and so on. Okay. If I want to add some negative values, I could. At negative 1 or 4, at negative 2 or 3, at negative 3 or 2. Again, we're looking for where these graphs are going to intersect. So the linear one's easy to graph in some sense. The quadratic one just takes a little bit more work, but not a big deal. Again, I could plug a value in here. And so I could plug a value and just kind of see, well, what's going to happen? Um, you know, if I put 0 in there, what happens when x is 0? When x is 0, it looks like y is 0. Mm, that could be true, um, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be uh, the point on the graph, right? So when x is 0, yeah, y does equal 0. But because it's quadratic, it's going to curve, and that doesn't tell me if that curve is happening at 0, 0. To figure out where that curve happens at maximum minimum, you want to go back to what we did several lessons ago, looking at your equation and figuring out where your vertex is going to be. To do that, if you recall, we used this formula. We did negative b over 2a to find a value for x. Well, my negative b would be a minus a minus 3, so minus a minus 3 over 2 times a, which is 1. So that's going to equal 3 over 2. Okay? So at about 3 over 2, that's my, my vertex. Okay? So at about 3 over 2, which tells me that's going to be somewhere about one and a half around here on this line will be the vertex for my quadratic. Now to find the y value at that point, I plug it back in to see where this is curved at. So let's take the x value. This is my x value right here for my vertex. I'm going to plug it in. So let's put it in here. I have 3 over 2 squared minus 3 times 3 over 2. Well, 3 over 2 squared is 9 fourths, right? Okay, 3 over 2 squared, 9 fourths. And this is going to be minus 3, 3 times 3 over 2 becomes 9 over 2. Okay, good so far there. So with this point, now I want to find a um, common denominator. Common denominator. 
So a common denominator for this one is going to be uh, 4. So this would become a 4, which makes this 18. So this makes it a negative 9 fourths is where I'm at for my y. Again, this is kind of crazy talk here. This becomes, if I make it a mixed number, this is negative um, 2 and 1 fourth. So somewhere down at 1, 2, 3, somewhere around here is my vertex. Okay? Do I know exactly where that's at? No, 2 and 1 fourth. My vertex essentially is at 3 halves comma negative 2 and 1 fourth. That's a crazy vertex, right? So I plot it there, and that tells me it's also, net, it's also um, positive. So it tells me this graph, if I plot it out, is going to curve like this somehow. Okay? So what I'm looking for is then where will it cross here and about here? Where will those points be? So I want to solve for those points there. If I just look at it graphically, I can look and say, it looks like it's somewhere around negative 1 where it crosses here, right? You can see it there. And on this side, not sure where this one's going to be at, but we're going to be further out for sure. We can tell we're 1, 2, 3, 4. You know, you can look at 4, 5, not sure where that's going to go exactly. And you can plug some point values in there to see where we're going to head off. So depending on how your teacher presented this one, they might want you just to graph it and draw and say about where that's going to be. Okay, and you can leave it there like that. Um, I'll tell you, if you were to look, because I think that might be about negative 1, if I plug negative 1 here in this equation, negative 1 squared is 1, and then minus 3 times a minus 1 is a, let's see, sorry, is going to be a 4, uh, sorry, no, it's, yeah, it's 3, sorry, so 1 plus 3 is 4, so here's a common point here, negative 1, 4 is a common point. That would be one of the solutions for sure that you might find for this equation. Okay. Now the second solution we look at, it looks like it's further down the road here. It looks like it's up in that 4 or 5 range. I'll tell you right now that the, the second answer they're looking for is going to be at 0.5 comma 10. And you'd have to graph that out to find that out. So be careful as you graph. Just make sure it's neat enough that you could figure out what it might be. So solution by graphing. So I'm not a huge fan of solutions by graphing because it just takes longer to figure out in some ways. And you're just not quite as accurate. Here's another one real quick. Let's look at number four. For number four, we have x squared plus 6x plus 1. We have a chart again. So let's make our little graph. I'm going to start here with my first one at 1, 2, 3, negative 3. That's my y-intercept for this one. And I know that I'm going up one, up 1 over 1. 1, 2, 1, 2. So we go 1, 2, linear graph like so. And that's my linear graph. If I make my table for my linear graph, and I know that at 0, we're at negative 3. Negative 1, we're at negative 4. Negative 2, we're at negative 5. Negative 3, negative 6. Because it just goes up and down one more. I have a nice little t-chart for my linear graph there. All right, no problem. So now I look at this one, x squared minus x squared plus 6x, all that stuff there. Loads of fun. Um, for the quadratic one, not as fun to work with, I know. So again, I like to use the negative b over 2a to find my vertex. This becomes a negative 6 over 2, which becomes a negative uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3, negative 3. So my x value of my vertex is at negative 3. So I'm going to be over here, negative 3. And so somewhere on this line, I'm going to get a graph that's going to curve, right? Somewhere on that line. Now I want to find the y value for that one. For the y value, I plug it back in. So I do negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 1. And we end up with 9 minus 18 plus 1, which gives you, um, sorry, negative 9 plus 1 which gives you a negative 8. So my vertex is at negative 3, negative 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 down here is where my vertex is going to be. So from a graphing standpoint, this equation is going to go something like that for the quadratic. The linear is going to go something like that. 
which tells me I should have a couple points somewhere along those lines there. Okay? So you'd have to plug in some points to figure out where they're going to be. Just estimating here, looking at it, where we are, it looks like I'm going to have one somewhere between probably around negative one, it looks like. And it looks like if I'm over here at negative three, probably it's going to flip back over and either be at five or negative five or negative seven. So you'd make a little t-chart here again, and then plug those in, knowing that you're aiming for that range. I would say make a t-chart and just go ahead and do a negative five, um, a negative four, and you already know negative three is there. You could do a negative three is already negative eight, and then negative two, negative one, and you could plug those in and get some values and see where do they cross at to find those two solution points. Okay, so looking here at negative one, our negative one was at negative four. Let's look at this negative one. If I plug negative one back into that equation, I end up with negative one squared is one minus six plus one. So that becomes a minus four. So that's definitely one of our solutions. And again, I would probably just go somewhere in this range to find the other one there as well. Okay, number five, substitution uh, using elimination, sorry. To use elimination, what I want to do first of all is I'm going to multiply this whole thing by a negative one so I can get rid of the y value. So this becomes y equals x squared minus y equals minus 3x. I just multiplied the whole bottom one by negative 1. So now I can eliminate those. So I have 0 equals x squared minus 3x. All right, so I eliminated that. I'm left with this equation. I can use factoring here, and I can take an x out of both of these parts of this. And I'm left with x minus 3 on the inside. So for my solutions for 0, I would say x equals 0, because that's there, and x equals 3. And those are my two solutions for that. In order to find out what the y value is, I plug it back in, the x into the y. So I have y equals, let's say, 3x. So when y x equals 0, we get y equals 0. So 0, 0 is one solution. And we have y equals 3x and plug it in. We have y equals 3 times 3. y equals 9. So at 3, we're at 3, comma 9. Those are the two solutions for that one. All right? Number eight, same idea. I'm going to multiply by a negative one on the bottom. So I end up stacking it up with y equals x squared plus 20x plus 80. And negative y equals negative x um, plus 10. Those go away. So I'm left with zero equals x squared, um, like terms there, plus 19x, like terms there, plus 90. This will factor. I have an x and an actually x squared. 90 is 10 times 9, so I'll do a 10 and a 9. And when I add up 9x and 10x, I get 19x in the middle. So my solutions in this case are x equals negative 10 and x equals negative 9. I'll plug that number answer back into the one that I eliminated. And I have y equals x, which is negative 10, minus 10, or it equals negative 20. So one solution is negative 10, negative 20. And the other solution is y equals negative 9 minus negative 10 or negative 19. So when x is negative 9, y is negative 19, and those are my two solutions for number 8. Flip it over to the back side for a couple of substitution ones before we have to run off. On the back side here, substitution. The substitution one's um, a little simpler in some ways. Um, again, it just depends what the numbers are. Substitution means I'm going to rewrite the equation like this. I'm going to take y equals x minus 6, and I'm going to substitute that value for that term right there. So it'll look a little bit like this. I'm going to move off the side here. I'm going to make, instead of y, I'll write x minus 6 equals the first equation, x squared minus 3x minus 27. So I substituted that value of y for that value of y. All right? Now I move things around. To make it work. So 0 is going to equal, and subtract, I have an x squared here, subtract x, so negative 4x, add 6, okay, so add 6 becomes negative 21, and now I have something that I could factor. I do x and x, 21 is 7 times 3, and I want a negative 21, and I end up with a negative 4 there, so I make the 7 the negative, and 3 the positive, so I have x equals x is going to equal 7, and x equals negative 3. Now to find the y values for that, I plug those back into that equation that I got rid of or substituted for. It's an easy one, right? 
So at negative 7, we would do y equals negative 7 minus 6 or negative 13. So one solution is, I have negative 7, sorry, it's positive 7, <laughs> positive 7. So we have this being just a po uh, positive 1. So at 7, or at 1, sorry about that, and then at negative 3, we're at y equals a negative 3 minus 6, it equals a negative 9, so negative 3 comma negative 9. So I'm just plugging it back in there on that one. Those are my two solutions, 7, 1, and negative 3, negative 9. For number 12, the same idea. I'm going to plug this guy back into there. Just a little more space here. We write it, rewrite it as 2x minus 1 equals x squared minus x minus 5. Okay, and I'm going to do minus x. So I have x squared minus 2x because minus 3x. Add a 1 over here, minus 4. Factor that out, and we have x, x, and 4 is 4 times 1. I want a negative 4 and adding a positive 1 to end up with a negative 3x in the middle. So my solutions are 4 and negative 1. I plug that back into my y equals 2 times 4 minus 1. 8 minus 1 is 7, so 4 comma 7 is one solution. And then y equals 2 times negative 1 minus 1. Negative 2 minus 1 is a negative 3, so negative 1 comma negative 3. And those are my two solutions for that problem there. Again, different ways of doing it. We have substitution, we have elimination, and we have graphing. You have to pick which one works best for you and for the equation that you have. Hope that helps.